So recently the new PS5 system software beta went live and I've been checking it out this past weekend and it's becoming abundantly clear to me that there are certain aspects of PS5's UI in terms of the features and what they were trying to sell people nearly two years ago. It's starting to fall short and more so these features are not nearly as sticky as Sony probably would have liked and so now they're trying to you know rectify that but it's uh, it's quite interesting so let's talk about it. This is something we just talked about on Friday for Let's Talk PlayStation, and it's that one of the major changes in this upcoming firmware, which, you know, again, it's currently in beta, but it will go live for everyone in a month, month and a half, uh, two months, but once it goes live, everyone will have this, and it's that they're changing the game hub for all your all your games, where when you look at it, and, you know, mind you, most people are probably starting games from just the main horizontal row, you press X, the game starts, but if you do happen to scroll down, that's where you can see the option to play a game, there's the dot dot dot, which will take you to the view product page, or, you know, other aspects of what the game might have, like a different version, or you could also uh, look at the cards or gameplay, and now they're baking in the uh, activity cards right next to the play game button, so play game will still act as a cold start if the game is not running, or if it is, it'll simply resume resume immediately, but uh, now you've got the resume or start activity card uh, baked into the right into the game hub. So they're sort of forcing more use of the activity card feature, which I'm telling you, they're doing that because people are not really using them. And, you know, we did a video on this like back in March or April of this year where the biggest problem with the card system, and I think it's a, a cool idea. I was always very optimistic about it because when Sony was selling PS5, you know, when they were trying to market it to people back in 2020, even before a formal reveal of the UI where they started that reveal with the card system, even before that, it was something where... Sony wants to make the games as accessible as possible so you can jump right into a certain point in a game, you can bypass menus, load screens, you can get in as quickly as possible with PS5's fast SSD and uh, you know that would be one way that you can start playing your games and also the cards have an estimated time tracker so you can see okay this level is going to take 5 minutes or 30 minutes so I know I have time to play one more mission or one more match or things like that right and so the cards uh, largely do that but it's also very developer dependent and that is the problem because in that video we did in March or April, nearly all games don't really function the way you expect them to. And so no behavioral patterns are going to develop for people if the cards don't do what you expect them to do. In fact, more often than not, games are not skipping load screens or menus, and we know they can do it. Of course, the best example are Sony first-party games, where they can bypass menus, load screens, they can take you right to where you last were, and oftentimes they're even faster. And so that's great. We know it's possible. In fact, one of the best case scenarios that we found was a Plague Tale Innocence, a third party game. It takes you right to where you were last in the game. There is a uh, tracking built into the cards. There is estimated time. There's PS Plus Game Help, which I love. I think PS Plus Game Help is still such an incredible, handy, useful feature, especially when, you know, if you're playing a story-based game, if you just want to find collectibles, if they're right there in the UI with short 10 second videos showing you exactly where it is, you know, I could not love that more instead of like going to YouTube, searching, you see a walkthrough, thumbnails are spoiling things. That's always been a, a massive pain, right? So PS Plus Game Help is good, but developers have to use that, right? But I just, the, the overarching point is I find it so silly that they're baking it right into the UI where... Now you've essentially got two play game buttons, if we're being honest here, and that is something you can already see in this uh, current beta because most cards, if a game does have them, it just takes you to where you, uh, it just takes you to the main menu where it's a normal boot, right? Most developers are not, are not necessarily doing it the way Sony was uh, initially selling it, and that's why I think that Sony should kind of step in and at least mandate certain aspects of how cards should work, right? You don't have to mandate cards being used in general, but if they are going to be used, there should be certain behavior patterns that, um, you know, Sony should mandate on that support. If you're going to use cards, great. They have to skip load screens. They have to take people to their last checkpoint. Um, and it can obviously be different depending on the game, but that's one little aspect of it too, right? There's also the fact that, uh, well, with PS Plus Game Help, now when you start games, there is a notification telling people, hey, this game has PS Plus Game Help. It's also right into the uh, Game Hub, so telling people again, hey, here's PS Plus Game Help, but I think it's awesome. 
it's uh, something where I, I don't necessarily fault Sony for reminding people if they're, you know, seeing on their end, if they have some telemetry, you know, telling them that people aren't really using these features as much as, uh, well, at least they were hoping at this point in PS5's life cycle, which we're at nearly two years in, and we're really starting to see that, you know, many aspects of PS5's UI are just underutilized. So there's that. Uh, going into settings, there's now new menus for 3D audio, both for TV speakers and headphones. And there's actually a new feature where it lets you directly compare stereo versus 3D audio. Now that's obviously going to be quite hard in terms of marketing. It's always been a bit of a challenge I find for Sony to try and market 3D audio in a meaningful way because you can't really convey that to people. So they're making videos that kind of you know, get the idea across, but it, there's no easy way to market 3D audio for, for most people, right? And so at least when a purchase goes through or somebody has their PS5, you can see in settings, there's a direct comparison of stereo versus 3D, which I actually found quite useful now that I can have a direct comparison that's immediate and uh, you can at least pick up the difference right away. And more importantly, you can also more easily set your um, HRTF profile, which Sony doesn't really tell you that in the UI, but that's essentially what you're doing when you're in the settings, uh, you know, messing around with 3D audio and picking those different sound profiles. Those are your HRTF profiles. And if you can find one that sounds the best to you and the most realistic, you will have a better experience with 3D audio. But um, the other news that came out was that Sony is retiring the accolades feature for PlayStation 5 this fall. I would gather that uh, once this firmware goes live for everyone, that's kind of the timeline they're using here where they'll take it out of the um, out of the profile where if you go to your profile, that's where your accolades will sit. But if you're playing a multiplayer game, there was always that option since day one to uh, give accolades to other players if they're helpful, if um, you know they're a good sport or something. And then I forget when they added this. It was uh, maybe a year in or so, but they added another accolade, which was which was leader but it's interesting seeing them just flat out say okay nobody's using this and we're just going to let this one go uh so nearly two years into ps5 there's a certain ui feature i guess we could call it but you know obviously there's a certain part of ps5 that sony meant to be it was meant to have high user engagement and they're already just kind of sweeping that under the rug and and I can see it all over most places IGN reddit Twitter uh, a lot of people saying that they did not even know this was a feature to begin with you know what does that really tell you but uh, there's still other big parts of ps5 the cards uh, ps plus 3d audio and you can see they're making calculated efforts to remind people and tell people about these features and also in in a way even sort of push people into using these features with uh, the game hub as an example. That's not to say I don't like them. Again, I love PS Plus game help. I think the cards still would be awesome if they always did what you think they would do. And 3D audio has always been hit or miss for me. Some games, it's it's amazing and I love it. Other games, I know it has it and there's just nothing there. And also if you have 3D audio turned on for a game that doesn't have it, that's actually sometimes a lesser experience, which is kind of silly, but this is the uh, the problem with going with a brand new UI. Outside of the, you know, the more bespoke features of PS5, you also have things that uh, people have been asking for that are still not here, like proper folders. I'm sorry, but game lists are not quite what, you know, everyone was asking for. 1440p support it's here no vrr that's that's disappointing but i'm sure they'll they'll eventually get there and offer that you know progress is progress and then uh themes which you know we've talked about themes before and i'm still not even sure if we'll really get themes it's very clear that the ui is designed in a way where it's meant to have your uh, library really take over the entire screen so if you add theme support it kind of has to override the number one design element of ps5 so i'm not saying they're not coming but it wouldn't surprise me if they just straight up don't because we're we're two years in nearly and there's still no sign of them but for the most part that's how i feel about the ui right now it's just very clear that they're trying to um highlight these bespoke ps5 features and encourage more engagement and i just don't know if they'll really get there until they uh well at least for cards where they tend to be the most problematic um you know encourage more developer support and at least show developers this is how they need to be done
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.